back and let's dive in. Sit at my grave, chapter 13. Arden had spent time at the McKinney's before, thanks to being friends with Gallon. They'd hung out over each other's houses and even had sleepovers in the past, but he'd rarely sat down at the table to have a whole meal with them. It was always bewildering to Arden how they did things. It seemed like what his mother wanted for their family, except everyone participated and seemed eager to do so. Hi, honey. What happened to your bad day at work? Gallon's mother greeted her husband as he walked in with Gallon Genevieve and Arden until... Did I say that? Well, you know, Genesis, these two got me laughing so much on the way back, I must have forgotten about it. He chuckled as he hugged and kissed his wife. Hi, babies. Oh, hi, Arda. Glad to see you. How have you been, dear? Genesis greeted with a smile. Be sure to hug both of her kids. Um, I'm alright, Arda answered back. Is it okay if Arda stays for dinner? Galen questioned. I don't see why not. Happy to have him. You know, we should get the whole family over sometimes. We don't talk enough. Genesis rambled on happily. She paused, turning to her husband, staring at her. Oops, am I running my mouth too much to claim? She chuckled, getting a little embarrassed. Nonsense, I just like listening when an angel speaks, he responded, kissing her forehead. She gently slapped him. He's so crazy, she laughed. Arden arched an eyebrow. He didn't say anything, but he was uncomfortable. Should we head to your room and wait? Arden asked, glancing at Gallon. Oh, uh, just a second. Me and Jenny usually help Mom finish up dinner when we get home. Gallon told him with a little shrug, seeing Arden's odd expression towards him. You can come help too, Arden. It's always Mary was more in the kitchen. Of course, you can watch TV instead if you like. Genesis told him with a smile. Uh, okay, thanks, Arden responded. The McKinney's were polite and all, but Arden felt like he didn't fit in there very much. Being in the kitchen working with them would be too odd. They clearly had a system, and Arden didn't want to mix into it too much. Arden sat alone on the couch. He turned on the TV, staring ahead. Their living room was cozy. Family pictures hung about, big soft pillows on their couch, a shelf for books and board games on the right side. Arden still felt a little out of place sitting there while all the McKinney's were in the kitchen. He at least tried to entertain himself with the television, although he didn't watch TV normally. He watched a few shows dealing with the paranormal, or odd uh, history channels. The most normal stuff he watched was when he and Reed were younger and he'd show him raunchy shows he'd find late at night. Those were some of the few memories Arden could think of when he and Reed weren't fighting, just two brothers getting into trouble together. Arden reached for the remote to change the channel. He flinched as a sharp pain shot through his head. He squinted his eyes as even his hands seized up from the sudden pain. He tried to think back on what could have caused it, but it was hard to him his brain seemed to be throbbing an ache. Hey you! Arden opened his eyes hearing the plucky voice in front of him. Genevieve stood there smiling. It's dinner time, let's go! She said, grabbing onto his hand with her smaller one. She tugged on it, beckoning Arden to get to his feet. Yeah, okay, okay, Arden said, getting out of his hazy thoughts. His headache started to fade out as he went to the dining room with Genevieve leading the way. As the family began engaging them in his conversation, the ache was almost non-existent. Arden never liked to trump any of those strange occurrences to just one of those things like most people, but for now he'd just have to wait until he had time to investigate more. I hope you're hungry, Arden. We have a lot of yummy dishes prepared, Genesis said happily, seeing her daughter dragging Arden behind her. Well, I haven't eaten yet, so... Arden mumbled as he sat next to Gallon. Ah! Genevieve suddenly cried out. What's wrong, honey? Clayton asked as he put his surfing platter down. I want to sit next to Gallon. Genevieve whined. Arden glanced at her awkwardly while declaiming Genesis shared a look with each other. Honey, Arden is our guest. How about we let him sit there just for now, hmm? Genesis suggested calmly. Genevieve looked up at Arden, still huffing for a bit, arms folded. Okay, she agreed, going to sit next to her mom instead. Gallon chuckled warmly. Sorry about that, Arden, he said. She just thinks her big brother's the coolest, declaimed laughed. Arden, do you like casseroles? I made a delicious veggie medley. The oatmeal really holds everything together, Genesis gushed as she scooped some onto her plate. We only had sweet flavored oats, but hopefully that makes it taste more unique, she smiled brightly. Arden looked down at his plate, frowning a bit. He wasn't sure if he could say he already hated it or not, but suddenly Declan spoke up. I don't think we'll be trying this meal again, at least not with such sweet oats, Declan laughed as he ate some. 
Is it that bad? She asked this question curiously. She ate some before quickly grabbing her water to drown it out. She laughed out loudly, too. Well, there's plenty more to eat, she suggested. Arden arched an eyebrow, watching as they waved it off and continued going on about how their day went. Everyone got a chance to talk about what their day was like before they got engaged in other conversations. Would you like to share your day, too, Arden? declared Ags, looking at him. Oh, yes, we'd love to hear about it, sweetie, Genesis said, smiling. Mom, Dad, Arden doesn't want to do all that, Cal spoke up for him, giving Arden a nervous smile. Although Arden truly didn't care about letting them know what he'd been doing, he was even more certain they wouldn't understand or care all that much. I didn't do much. Finished up things for school. My dad's in town, Arden told him, biting up some food. Oh, how exciting! You'll have a lot of catching up to do. I bet you're happy. I know you used to talk about him a lot. Well, that was when you talked more. Before you got so broody and quiet with us. Genesis began rambling again. Mom! Gallant said in embarrassment. Arden smirked a bit. I am glad he's back, Arden answered honestly. Arden always remembered being fond of his father. Although he was gone a lot for work, he always made an effort by sending the money to help fund any projects Arden cared about. He even sent a little note about it sometimes. Another reason he liked him was how he always seemed so in tune with his thoughts. Very rational and stoic. Even in the situation they were in now, Arden was sure his father would swoop in and make sense of it all. Arden soon finished dinner with the McKinneys, and after a while of them sitting around watching TV together, Arden was finally able to get Gallon alone in his room. I'm glad you came over, Arden. This might be the last time we have a sleepover, Gallon chuckled. He went over, jumping backwards on his bed, resting his hands behind his head. When do you think you're leaving for college? Arden asked, sitting in Gallon's chair in front of his desk. Whenever I apply and get accepted, I guess. The college tour is going to be fun. Gallon said, looking over, smiling at Arden. Are you going to miss me? Gallon joked. I'll be counting the days till you get back. Arden answered dryly, making Gallon laugh. Want to play a game before bed? We have plenty of board games, Gallon said, sitting up with a stretch. Actually, Arden began saying. But suddenly his phone rang. He glanced down, seeing who it was before putting it away. Is it your mom again? She called at dinner, too. Maybe you should call her back. Callan said, unable to hide the worry in his voice. I'll call her back tomorrow. She's probably just trying to get me over there again, Arden muttered. I know you're going to get mad, but why don't you go? Come on, Arden, Callan tried convincing him again. Because I don't want to be part of the drama, Arden said, looking away. But I know what we can do instead, Arden said as he unzipped his backpack. Callan leaned over a little, trying to see what Arden was doing. No, Arden, it's so late. Gallon whispered, seeing the book. Best time to do it, Arden told him. I had this weird dream. It's so hazy now, but I remember a headache and some voices. It wasn't like anything I've ever experienced, Arden explained lowly. Gallon swallowed nervously. I want to find out if it was just a dream, or... Arden trailed on, shaking the book towards Gallon, who jumped back a little. If it was that bad, are you sure you want to mess around with it? Gallon questioned. I have to know. Well, if someone was trying to talk to me, Arden said, sounding more fascinated as he spoke. Gallon shuddered at the thought. Maybe it was just a scary dream, Gallon tried to reason with him. And we'll know for sure if we look it up, Arden urged him. I don't want to, Arden, Gallon told him gingerly. He didn't like saying no or upsetting anyone, but it was one thing to do that stuff in the first place, but another to do it where his family was sleeping. Gallon couldn't say if he fully believed in all of it or not, but why take a chance? I want to, Arden countered. They stared at each other briefly. Gallon caged with a sigh, looking away. Okay, but nothing crazy, Gallon suggested. Arden smirked. Let's get to work, he said, placing the book down on the desk. Gallon and Arden stayed up late, flipping through Arden's book in search of some type of lead, but finding something specifically for the symptoms of Arden's hazy dream proved to be difficult. It was hard for Arden to even remember it all, let alone trying to find out what it all meant. Arden searched on Gallon's computer about it as well, but the tired search was getting them nowhere. There's gotta be something we're missing, Arden mumbled. They had Gallon's laptop and lamp on now as their source of light. The rest of the house had already gone silent much earlier. Or maybe it was just a dream, Gallon mentioned again with a yawn. We should go to bed, Arden. It's late. We can always look later, Gallon told him, placing his hand on his shoulder. 
He could tell Arden looked tired too, but he hated being stumped, especially on what he considered his strong suit. Fine, Arden agreed begrudgingly as he closed his book. Got a smirk weakly at him, happy to finally be getting some sleep. The two put everything away. Galen gave Arden a pair of pants to sleep in, and finally clicked the lamp off and went to bed, falling asleep quickly in the calm and quiet room. The sound of a phone ring pierced through the silent peace of the room. The sudden noise sent an uneasy jolt through the air, waking them up instantly. There wasn't enough time to register what that noise was before the phone started ringing downstairs, too. It was even later by now, in the darkest hours of the morning, and that terrible sound rippling through the once quiet home sent an unsettling stir through everyone. Why would someone be calling at an hour like this? Could it have been a wrong number? But maybe they were just hoping it was. That dual ringing proof that hoped to be plain delusion. Your mom's calling, Gallon whispered. He sat up hugging his pillow, his sleepy voice accompanied by the ringing of the air. It gave a spine-chilling apprehensive feeling somehow. Although a phone call from your mother should never frighten you, and the voice of your dearest friend shouldn't leave such a pit in one's stomach, Arden lifted his phone up answering it. Gallon stared at him while Arden stared at the ceiling. Mom, it's late. Arden began speaking in the quiet, demanding dark. Arden, I... Arden, oh my god. Really spoke in a broken tone. Arden opened his mouth to speak again, but sound of really breaking to hysterics as he struggled to speak made him forget his words. Mom? Arden questioned again. He felt the warmth of Galen getting closer to him. He could feel something was wrong, too. The sound really produced. He couldn't explain it in his words, but the communication was still there. She was in agonizing pain. He heard it, and the pain in his stomach just grew deeper. Arden didn't move. His face barely showed the confusion. But all the same, Galen saw the shift. He put his arm around his shoulder, watching in concern, but he remained quiet. Shuffling, shifting, all types of movements and talking were going on. Arden... Arden, baby. Emily struggled trying to compose herself. Arden could feel the swell of unwanted anticipation. He didn't even notice as the hand resting on a sheet had began gripping it. Arden wanted to tell her to just tell him what happened, but he couldn't bring himself to even do that this time. Your brother. Oh my god. Oh my god. Your brother. He's gone. Really shaking, broken words finally spilled out. Arden's eyes got a bit wider, but the words, the situation, he couldn't quite comprehend it. Another shift, someone took the phone from her just as Arden began trying to question her again. What? Arden fell, trying to keep his complete composure. Reed died, Arden, his father's voice told him calmly. Arden ceased up, a cold numbness rushed over his limbs. He felt his air get thin, he couldn't breathe. It was like he'd gotten punched in the stomach. The pin inside him was deep and hollow. He stared ahead, but he couldn't register what was right in front of him. He dropped his phone to the ground.